Hello, this is Nate Riggs with NateRiggs.com, and I'm coming at you uh, with Jason Falls uh, from Social Media Explorer, and we're on ContentMarketingInstitute.com. So thanks so much for joining me today, Jason. Uh, thanks for having me, Nate. So uh, very excited. I know that you're going to be participating in Content Marketing World as well as a speaker. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about kind of the angle of what your talk is going to be at, uh, be about at the conference? Yeah, Joe Polizzi um, uh, spoke at one of my events back in May and asked me if I would come and talk about a, a, a content measurement roadmap. So thinking about your content marketing strategy and, and all the different fingers that it might have and how you're going to plan to measure so that you don't have to you know, get to the end of the first month and go, okay, what did we get out of it? And you, you hadn't really thought through um, you know, the kind of metrics you were going to use. So I'm going to talk a lot about uh, KPIs versus PIs. Uh, talk a lot about some of the tracking mechanisms that you can use and some of the metrics and analytics that you want to think of when it comes to your content marketing strategy. Okay, so very, very cool session on that. And I think that kind of leads into a little bit of what your attitude is towards social media, online marketing. The new book is called No Bullshit uh, Social Media that you've co-authored with Eric Deckers. Um, what is bullshit social media? <laughs> well, it's really just sort of the, the book is, 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 I think, brings the conversation for, for businesses, small businesses, medium businesses, and even enterprise businesses. And, and they've been listening to all these social media marketing consultants and, and uh, you know, evangelists and whatnot over the years mm -hmm. talk about joining the conversation and engaging with your customers and listening and, and, and all that stuff, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we're not criticizing them for promoting, you know, sort of the um, philosophical approach to social media marketing which can can help you be successful as a company but not enough people are talking about the other side of it because when you add the word marketing to the phrase social media you're now talking about business yep. and you need to measure business drivers and you need to know how this is going to move the needles uh, on all of those things that you look at in terms of revenue cost savings are our customers happy so on and so forth and so what this book really tries to do more than anything else is let business owners who are skeptical or who think social media is bullshit because fewer people are talking about the actual you know, revenue drivers and things of that nature and make it more digestible to them. Make, it, make them understand that you can think of social media marketing as a strategic communications channel and here's how you can do it uh, and it, it's kind of got a little strategic planning roadmap in there. You know, it's 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 a, no wonder that you've got a lot of really interesting comments on the back of the book and a lot of interesting reviews because I think there is a call for that kind of in the corporate world right now of how do we make this actionable, how do we fit this into our marketing toolbox. But it brings up an interesting question as well. So these are marketers. We're talking about marketing which is related to business. What is the difference between social media marketing or social media strategy and marketing and content marketing or content marketing strategy and is there a difference between the two? Well, the differences are going to be very, very subtle, and quite frankly, that's one of those topics or one of those questions I think we could dissect, you know, a hundred different ways, yeah. um, because content marketing is such a big part of social media marketing. Without content and social media marketing, does, there's not a whole lot to it. You know, you're pretty much just focusing on conversations, but I would even argue that even your conversations are content. Yeah. Uh, in certain ways. So they're very similar. There's a lot of overlaps. The differences, is, as I see it, are this. Content marketing is not necessarily focused on the internet. Um, when you're talking about content marketing, you're also talking about printed newsletters. Yeah. You're also probably talking about the copy and content that goes into your advertising communications, direct mail pieces, um, you know, sales letters. There's lots of of facets to content that don't touch the online world. Um, social media marketing, though, uh, on the contrary, I think not doesn't only include content. It also includes advertising placement, particularly on social media networks. Uh, it includes a lot of sort of real-time conversational elements that while you can certainly you know aggregate all of your conversations at the end of the day and say, poof, look, content, um, you don't think of a real-time conversation on a social network as something that you plan and write and, and map out strategically like you would you know, a newsletter, an email, or a blog post. So the differences are very subtle, and I don't think that um, social media marketing exists without content marketing strategy. 
uh, or at least not very well. Okay. Um, I do think that content marketing can exist without social media if you're focused on the offline kind of world. Okay. Um, but there's so many overlaps and they're so similar that you almost have to think about one with the other. Okay. Well, I think that's a really uh, interesting answer to a, a very interesting question uh, in itself. So uh, a lot of what you've talked about is related to business, conversion, marketing, really generating revenue, sales, things like that. Um, how did you get the breadth of experience that you had? What, what did you do before Social Media Explorer and, and the book and everything else? Well, I spent the, kind of the, the short story is that I spent uh, professionally a couple of years as a, a broadcast journalist, okay. uh, a radio producer, um, and then I spent 12 years as a college athletics public relations uh, person. So they call them sports information directors. Um, but I was uh, also challenged with uh, doing public relations and sports information at a lot of small schools. So I had to sort of maximize the technology uh, around me in order to be more productive. So I became very web savvy, uh, you know, in the, in the mid 90s. Um, and then, you know, moved into a little bit more of a director's position and whatnot. But I built websites for my athletic programs, things of that nature. However, on the side, as a, a personal aside, I wrote a newspaper column uh, in the late 90s that um, I wanted to figure out how to publish it online so that more people outside of the small town uh, newspaper that it was being written for could read it. And so I figured out how to do that originally on AOL member pages. Okay. Um, and I would, but I would ask people for their comments and whatnot, and then I would publish the comments online uh, and answer their questions. And so technically I was blogging. This was probably late 1997, early 1998. Okay. And so from, from about 1998 through about 2005, 2006, I was using social media. I was one of the first, I think, 25,000 members on MySpace and a couple of other social networks. So I was constantly trying to figure out online communications for fun more than anything else, but also to help me in my professional communications roles. And then when I got out of college athletics and started working at Doe Anderson, uh, which is an advertising agency here in Louisville and has a lot of national clients, um, I kind of looked around and said, hey, why aren't we talking about blogs and social media and social networks? And nobody was really doing it for Doe at the time. And they said, hey, if you can, if you can sell it, you can do it. So knock yourself out. And fortunately, we had a lot of clients like Makers Mark and Jim Beam and a couple of other nice brands that were interested in doing some innovative things online. And so I kind of was in the right place at the right time. So since 2006, 2007, I've been developing digital and social media strategies for companies large and small. That's a very cool story. And, and honestly, I think it's... It's not one that's dissimilar from other folks that are doing this. Everybody gets into it because they're just interested. They're just kind of passionate and want to get in and play around. And eventually you figure out how to turn that into a business. Um, so, again, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you speak in Cleveland September 6th through the uh, 8th. Uh, so cheers to that. And, and I'll look forward to seeing you at uh, Content Marketing World. Can't wait, Nate. Thanks, man. Thanks very much.